Okay students, so this is a uh, quick flip learning video on the context of the first text that we're looking at, which is Othello for A2 Literature, the second year of English Literature, Shakespearean Tragedy, Othello. So just before we get to the lesson, I want you to have um, in place uh, uh, some background uh, knowledge of the play. Okay, so that's where we're going to start in terms of the actual background of its performance. So uh, understanding of the Shakespearean theatre. So the first thing to say about the, the performance of the play is it's first performed in 1604. Okay, and that's a, an important date, 1604, because it's um, 1603 is um, the date at which uh, Elizabeth I uh, dies, and we lose this sort of golden age of Elizabeth I being the Elizabethan period, and we move into um, uh, James I, what we call the Jacobean period, which uh, is a weird way of saying. James is in charge. So if you want to do some extra research, you can look into James I, um, also the King of Scotland at the time, and then becomes the King of England in 1603. And so this 1603-4 this period is quite a dark time in, um, in, um, in the history of, 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 of England, really. It's, um, uh, you might have heard of the gunpowder plot that's going on around a similar time. Um, uh, there's a lot of changes going on and a lot of sort of religious strife, 1603-4. And obviously you can imagine uh, quite a lot of people aren't happy with uh, the King of Scotland being the King of England, etc. So have a look into James I if you're interested in, in, in that. Um, so it's performed in this time, uh, probably written 1603, something along those lines. Okay. Now, it's performed at both the public and private theatres. That's something to, to start with. So the first recorded performance is at what we call a private theatre. It's actually performed for James I. And Shakespeare, uh, his company called Lord Chamberlain's Men, uh, actually changes its name when James comes to the throne to uh, the King's Men. And they perform in, in a sort of private um, uh, performance at court in front of the king uh, and, and well-to-do people, etc., uh, etc. Et so um, uh, clearly, this is a you know a play that appeals to um, educated, intellectual, and um, 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 significant members of society. But at the same time, um, on the what we call the quarto version of the play, which is like a little sort of um, almost like a pamphlet version of the play that's that's uh, published at the time. That was um, uh, people used to read plays a lot as well as watching them when they first came out. It says that it's it's been performed at public theatres and private theatres, so the Blackfires and the Globe. So um, public theatres are much more as, um, what we'd expect in terms of quite a raucous, bawdy place with lots and lots of poor people, lots and lots of people from different walks of life. So it's got quite a varied performance history, both you know sort of the very upper echelons of society and um, in these sort of private performances, private indoor theatres as well, which is sort of more middle class area and public uh, theatres, open air theatres for everyone. So, so there's quite a big appeal to the play, really. Okay, uh, well, some of the things that most people are aware of, but obviously uh, we would have uh, boys, younger boys, or up to sort of uh, younger teenage boys playing the female parts. So. Uh, uh, it, there were no female actors um, at this time. Uh, it's another 30 or 40 years until you get female actr uh, actresses um, in the theatre. So all of the, the female parts are played by, by boys. Okay, um, that's the context of the, um, uh, the the play in terms of its performance. We're going to get into a lot more detail about that. The other um, aspect to say is that it is a tragedy, and so understanding what's normal for a tragedy might be quite important. So the fact that it's in five acts, that it sort of uh, goes along with what we call the um, Aristotelian model or Aristotle's model, um, Aristotelian model, which is this idea of um, a sort of a classical model of tragedy five acts, um, these unities, um, and, and this is a question that we're going to look at in the play. So is it a classical Aristotelian tragedy where you have um, this unity of space and time in five acts and everything's really ordered and it really works nicely and all the rest of it, or is it a bit more of a sort of a mess or a revenge play or something along those lines? Okay. Um, some other ideas to do with tragedy, you have a tragic hero in a tragedy, and that tragic hero tends to be someone of high class, um, which of course a fellow as a general is, um, and they have what's called a fatal flaw or um, a hamasha, a fatal flaw. So the question of what that fatal flaw is, um, is, um, is an important one. Tragic heroes in classical tragedies tend to be otherwise good per people 
who have a flaw in their character that leads to the downfall. So they can't be stupid and bad. The, that would be a different type of play. They've got to be high class, good people. And so obviously pride might be seen to be um, uh, hubris. You know, pride might be seen to be a fellow's tragic flaw. That might be something. Um, another couple of things um, that might come in, the fact that the tragedy, we often in tragedy for Shakespeare have what we call the mal malcontent character, uh, somebody who sort of believes they're hard done by and slighted. Uh, so uh, we have Edmund in King Lear, um, we've got um, several plays at the time where there's this classical sort of cl character of the malcontent and of course Iago is often seen to be the sort of person who rails against authority etc. Okay, a couple of things to do with marriage. Marriage is of course a big issue. The whole play starts with this issue of a marriage, doesn't it? Um, a secret marriage. And of course it's important to recognise this idea that um, marriage is essentially about ownership and it's about property um, and it's about um, um, a, a sort of economic transaction um, at the time the play is set and, and of course the time that it's um, being performed as well. So uh, the idea of marrying for love or what might be we sort of decide sort of courtly love um, is, is relatively new at the time. Um, so the idea that you would marry for love, the idea you would write poems to each other and fall in love and, and experience these, these intense emotions, that's a very separate question from marriage, which is essentially sort of an economic process. Uh, and women are the property of their fathers, and then they are sort of transferred to be property of their husbands. And so the idea of, 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 of marriage um, uh, being for love is a very new and challenging idea at the time. So this idea of a sort of an equal marriage is, um, uh, is a sort of new and exciting idea. Even the idea of sort of marriage by choice or marriage because you fall in love, um, that's a, a challenging idea at the time. There'll be many, many uh, arranged marriages, especially in the upper echelons of society, uh, with people like Desdemona uh, in, in this uh, society. And of course, um, mixed marriage is, is not unheard of um, uh, mixed race marriage is not unheard of in the, uh, the 16th and 17th centuries, but it is incredibly rare and, and would be seen um, uh, as, as, as a very challenging concept. And, and there would be some expectation of that leading to, to, to problems at the time, given some of the, the different attitudes towards race that people had at that time. Okay, um, the, the, the play is set in two different places. Um, the first act is um, set in... Um, uh, in uh, Pardon, I've done that completely wrong. Acts uh, two to five, uh, we do have to use Roman numerals. Okay, so it, it, two to five is set in Cyprus, and Act one is set in Venice. Okay, so in understanding what that means to people in, in London at that time, you know, in exactly the same way, um, we've got. Um, different uh, attitudes towards, uh, say, Italy and Spain and different sort of stereotypes at the time that, uh, that we've got today. At the time, you had uh, sort of stereotypes about these different places where the play is set. So Venice would be seen as um, quite a sort of civilised place, um, even though it's a, a Catholic country. Um, and, of course, there's some re the religious tension at the time, which we might get into. Um, it's seen as very civilised. It's um, some of the similar... Um, uh, stereotypes about Italians that people have today were still felt were, were felt back then as well, and so uh, the idea of it being quite a passionate place, but it's also seen as what we might call this almost sort of quite uh, republican or sort of meritocracy, um, uh, sort of almost. Um, it's almost like a republic. So um, obviously there is an aristocracy and there are dukes, but it's seen to be more of a place where you can get by on merit. It's a sort of city-state where you can rise. And of course, a fellow being, having so many disadvantages, uh, being a former slave, for example, in the, uh, um, sold into slavery in Turk, uh, under the Turks, um, uh, and being a person of a different race, has managed to rise to the very top of his profession. Whereas Cyprus is seen as sort of at the end of the civilised world. So obviously there was an awful lot of religious and, and sort of racialised tension um, uh, at, this, at the time when the play was set and also when it was, um, when it was written, when it was being performed. So it's sort of seen at the end of the civilised world, very close to um, uh, the, the Turkish Empire, the Ottoman Empire, which would be seen as this you know, very dangerous encroaching thought force in Europe. And actually... Um, the play is, is set about 100 years um, before it's being performed, and at the time it's being performed, Cyprus is actually um, 
under ownership by the Turkish uh, Turkish army. So it's been occupied. It's actually been lost. A former Christian um, place, which has become this um, uh, Ottoman part of the Ottoman Empire, this this um, Islamic country now. So um, it's set in a place at the very end of the civilized world. So uh, it's close to, to Turkey or the the Ottoman Ottoman Empire, which is seen as this very very dangerous force. So um, we've got a really complex picture of race emerging here as well, because uh, this sort of more meritocratic, uh, anybody can get on world of Venice has allowed uh, Othello to rise to the height of his profession, which is very unusual for uh, a person who is black at this time. However, there's a sort of almost sort of uh, racist attitude towards this other in terms of um, the Ottoman Empire, this, this Islamic um, um, uh, empire which is threatening Europe in the 16th and 17th centuries and so uh, Othello who uh, is, a, is the general of Venice actually goes to Cyprus to fight the Turks. So There's quite a complex picture of race going on uh, in, in the play but what's really important is that sort of Venice is this sort of civilized, romanticized, um, uh, more meritocratic uh, society, whereas Cyprus is seen as this almost sort of barbaric, almost sort of, um, but weirdly at the same time quite free sort of place. Um, so you know you, you're more free to to do what you want and things along those lines. So um, yeah, you, you're less less constrained by the rules of civilization when you go to to Cyprus. Okay, so that's probably enough. Oh, we've just got a uh, race to do as well, which I'll just get onto there as well. So we've got um, Othello. Obviously, um, uh, race is a big question at the time, but essentially, um, race is, 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 is sort of... Of course, there were attitudes um, uh, that were racist at the time, but it, it's more a sense of, of being exotic. So in London at the time the play was performed, there were people um, from different countries. There were there were black people in London at this time, as well as people from uh, the Middle East, uh, but they were mainly sort of ambassadors and tradespeople. Um, and and the idea that you get more in more recent history, the racist ideas of perhaps. Um, uh, people from different countries being inferior were not really as firmly developed. This is pre the slave trade, the European uh, and the African uh, slave trade. Um, but what you do get is a sort of a racist attitude, which is to make uh, people who are foreign seem exotic and perhaps a little bit dangerous or different in those ways. So uh, there's this sort of exoticism about race uh, at, at the time. Um, so, you know, it, it's not that there were no black people, you'd be wrong if you said that about um, uh, Shakespeare in London, but they were rare and seen to be exotic and mysterious. So in Act One we get this amazing story from Othello about, you know, uh, where he's been and his past and he's, you know, uh, he's seen all these incredible dangers and this idea of he's this exciting storyteller and this, um, uh, you know, associated with the, the exotic and the mysterious. That's more of the type of racism that you get at the time rather than simply, um, you know, um, uh, everybody thinking that, that, that black people were inferior as you would get in, say, in the 18th century when they had those racist views. Um, so this exoticism, this mysticism is part of it, but of course you do still get in the play some deeply, deeply racist language, notably from Iago. Um, however, the important point is we're not necessarily supposed to see things from Iago's perspective. Um, so there's a really complicated picture of race. Obviously, you know, there is some simply racist language in the play. Uh, this is a product of its time, um, but of course we have to be able to, to deal with this and not just go, oh, did you know in the past they were all racist? It's much more complicated than that. It depends how race is represented. And, 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 you don't, and even if someone is being racist and using racist imagery, which happens quite a lot in the play, it doesn't mean the audience is supposed to agree with them. That's a question you'd have to deal with. Okay, so we're going to have a quick talk uh, in the lesson about theatre, Venice, marriage, Cyprus, tragedy and race. And so after having watched this video, watched this video I hope you've got a little bit more to, to think about. Okay, thank you.